Ramble. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of You Can Sit With Us. My name is Maggie. I am one of your hosts, and I am joined today in the podcast studio by Rainy, our podcast producer. Hello. And then we have Becky remoting in from home. Hello. And we have Bosef here, who you may (laughs) see or hear at some point, so bear with us. (laughs) Um, Today, we have a very fun episode for you. We are doing a book club. But before that, we're going to just do a little check-in. So how was everyone's weekend? (laughs) It was good. It was chill, very... Lots of cleaning, lots of laundry time. Um, And then we went to Long Beach because one of my best friends, her daughter, just turned two. So we went to her birthday party and it was very cute. Long Beach is so cute. I just wish it wasn't so far away. Long Beach is adorable. Long Beach is very cute. It's so cute. Like once you're there, you have everything. It's just so hard. Um. Yeah, I don't know how she does it. She commutes and I mean, not right now. She's on maternity leave because she just had another baby, mm-hmm. a cute little baby boy. Um, but she commutes in. She works at Watcher. She's their creative development oh. head. Yeah, she's very That's fancy. cool. Mm-hmm. Watcher has good she's, stuff. Not to. <laughs> she is very talented. Yeah. She was also the Try Guys producer back at BuzzFeed. Oh, so. I've heard of her. Uh-huh. I've heard lots about yeah. her. Um, yeah, she's awesome. She's like crazy talented. Um, and yeah, she lives in Long Beach now. She used to live in Hollywood. What was the party? Was it was there a theme? Um, you know, there wasn't much of a theme. She always does cause something like kind of underwater because um, oh. her bedroom is like underwater themed, like turtles and mermaids and stuff. Um, but I mostly got to meet all of her daughter's name is Evie. And I got to meet all of her daycare friends cute oh. they are so cute one of the little girls ran up to her and was like oh hey Evie hey and like oh. ran around and was like gave her a hug and I was like oh was my so gosh cute. Mm. Oh. yeah they were really funny and we had like bubble bubble shooter things and yeah oh. it was really cute it was at a um park and thankfully it was supposed to rain but it didn't which was nice cute. speaking of underwater have you gone to that I, uh, aquarium down there oh. with Katie since it's in Long Beach. I or haven't brought- gone to the aquarium Hen- with Katie, but I went with Sarah and Juju and me and oh. Henny went a couple oh, cute. Of weeks ago to Long Beach Aquarium. <laughs> what it was think? actually crazy. It is crazy. So we're standing there, right? We're standing there. We're watching this like, I think it was it's something bigger than a seal. Maybe sea lion, something like that. <laughs> swimming around, <laughs> swimming around, swimming around. There are a bunch of kids there, right? We got Henny and Juju, and they're up at the glass looking. And all of a sudden, this sea lion takes a massive poop. Oh. It literally, like, made half the tank brown. You would have thought Sarah and I were, the, the you know, the young kids there because we went, ew, oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> like, the whole time, that's all we could talk about was seeing this sea lion poop. I was like, I guess I never really like thought about how like sea lions poop, but yeah, it pooped and it they pooped do right that. in front of the window. Oh, wow. Oh, and underwater too. I guess I always pictured and underwater. Yeah. How do they clean mm-hmm. the tank? Cause it's also a huge tank. Yeah. yeah. So it was still, it was like in this little walkway between the inside and the outside. And so we were there for a little bit and there was still poo poo everywhere. And oh. then we like left, went to the inside wa- or went to the outside and walked by like the penguins and stuff. And then when we came back, there was still like poo poo remnants. So oh I think it takes goodness. a while for the poo poo to totally go away. Yeah. I'm just guessing <laughs> like insane filtration system. Yeah. Like it was crazy. We saw, saw his whole like butthole. Like, <gasps> It was like a lot. It was. Are you still trying? Kind of Sarah, st- Sarah was here to like just to talk about it because <laughs> I sound insane. But that's like that was our whole trip to the aquarium was was uh, overshadowed by the poop. I was wow. discussing. Yeah, Meg, I feel like you'd be uh, really into aquariums. I love aquariums. I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, which is very embarrassing. But the Monterey Bay Aquarium is very cool. Yes. Ooh. Nothing but nice things to say about. I want to go back to Monterey just so I can go to that aquarium because it was so fun and yeah. just so amazing and incredible. 
I need um, to go. Yeah. 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 I've never been. I got to go back like <gasps> behind the scenes too, which was even cooler. What? How did you? Whoa. How did you get a ba- BTS pass? Samra, which is like my oh. very f- close friend from high school, used to be a volunteer there. Oh. And she knew some people. So they let us go back and we got to see like a great Pacific octopus. We got to see all sorts of different types of coral. But yeah, Whoa. there's sometimes, so Zach and I went for Zach's birthday. It was like on a Wednesday last year to the aquarium of the Pacific and we want to go back. We love aquariums. I wish that I could have like a moon jelly fish tank at our house. What they're is so, a moon jelly? Moon jellies yeah, are the that? ones, they're like tiny little jellyfish and you can put them in like special little tanks and have fun lights on them and they are just cool <gasps> and adorable but they that would really fit the vibe of your house i know but it's like yeah. so, i'm pretty sure yeah, it's a salt water tank and it like needs all sorts of yeah upkeep and cleaning Ooh. and i did have really cool fish tank i did have a salt water fish tank when i was in high school and it was a lot of work <gasps> and like if any Whoa. sort of the balances just come off then all your things just die you did have a <laughs> I did. I what kind of, love what kind of sea life were you rocking? I had clownfish, of course. This was like after like Finding Nemo came out, of course. Whoa. I had dories. I had a Jacques. A Jacques? You had essentially the, the cast of Finding Nemo. I had the cast of Finding Nemo. Yes, and I had a pineapple in there. Oh I had Patrick's little figurine in there as well. Wow. I had colorful rocks that would look really cool under the black light. It was a whole thing. It was a whole thing, fine. and I'm upset that I don't have one now that I'm an adult, but it's just, it, it's another level of responsibility that <laughs> I'm not looking for right now, but I love the idea of having a moon jelly fish tank, maybe one day. You're really impacted by the media portrayal of fish. Like, I feel like, <laughs> like, <laughs> True. Apple, Nemo, yes. Dory. Yes. Um, what do you guys think about, I mean, there's this thing on the internet, uh, Scar, is his name Scar? The hot fish. Hot fish. The guy in the aquarium who had a scar. Oh, I don't know. Oh. Hold on. Hey, what was his name? I, I is yeah, he on- let's look him up. I don't know. I thought his name was Scar, but I feel like that's the Lion King. Yeah. That's definitely Lion King, but it could be both. Oh, is he the black and white yes. fish? Yes. Yes. Had- he- what's his name? It was voiced by what's his name? The Joker. Um Oh, Heath Ledger? No. The other Joker. The Green Goblin. Oh, William Come- Defoe? I'm pretty sure he's the voice of it. Yes, William Defoe. William Defoe was the Green Goblin. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but he um he's one of those cartoons that is like, wait, why is he hot? Like this is a fish cartoon. <laughs> but I'm like kind of like interested. You're interested <laughs> in William Defoe fish? <laughs> um I was just talking to Caitlin about um also not Scar, but his protege, Kovu. Kovu. Did you guys is watch Lion King too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really hot. Really hot. <laughs> I don't think I watched the okay, hold on. I did not watch the sequel. <laughs> Becky, what do you think? I mean, I haven't watched it in like a million years, but I do remember like of all the like cartoon franchises, like Lion <laughs> King was really hot. Yeah. And so was um, Robin Oh, Hood. he is really cute. Especially like as a teenager. <laughs> yeah. Kovu with his little coif. With his coif. Mm-hmm. Literally like the coloring, the hair, his green like, eyes. He's like, yeah, the uh, the contrast. Wait, Becky, which it. was the, um, the second? It was Lion King and who else was hot? Uh, Robin Hood. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Did you ever watch old Robin Hood? No pants, green shirt. Mm-hmm. No. He was, he was a he was chari- He had the riz. He, was he had riz. Charming. He had riz before we knew what riz was. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. do you have a cartoon crush? Danny Phantom. Oh. <laughs> So fast. Ooh, that was so fast. <laughs> that was quick. Did not need to think about that. Danny one. Phantom. Zach went into Goodwill a couple weeks ago, I think for a video or maybe a vlog, but he had a Danny Phantom shirt and he came out the other weekend with it on. And I was like, oh, where'd oh you my. get that? Where did you get that? Like, oh, don't do this to me. I right know. Now. I was a big fan of Danny Phantom growing up. That's Still think he's a cutie. Now, yes. Maggie, I do have to ask, unfortunately, who is Danny Phantom? Yeah. <gasps> He's a phantom. Did what you, is he do? Did you watch? No. I don't know him. Yo, Danny Thanton. He was just 14 when his parents built a very strange <laughs> machine designed to see a world unseen. He's got to catch him all because he's Danny Phantom. Oh, my goodness. So he's watch. like a ghost hunter? Um, yeah. Is but he he's a like a normal kid, too. And then he like treats oh, okay. him. Yeah. But is he a phantom? Yeah. Oh, so he's a ghost who catches other ghosts? Mm-hmm. Danny. Danny. 
Wow. Does he like go to school? To be like, honest, I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a while since I've watched Danny Phantom, but interesting. I can't remember, but I can tell you the whole theme song. <laughs> She's too too blinded by yeah, his, his goodness. To what his good focused on the plot. I'm pretty sure that he's like a Spider Man situation where he's like a normal kid, but then can like oh flip into you flip. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. But well, yeah, so one day you'll have a jelly a jellyfish tank. Yes. But I and did you have the fish tank, the saltwater fish tank, because your parents were like allergic to everything else? Yeah, and they were just allowing me to do. They were like, I guess you can have a tank. Yeah, and there was like a saltwater, uh, like a fish store close to our house growing up, and I was like, I really want fish, and they were like, Okay, they were like, Okay, <laughs> okay. Did you keep it in your room? I feel like it would smell bad. No. Um, it had pretty good filtration system set okay. up into it, but we did. St- I did start out with just goldfish that were like ev- no filtration system yeah. kind of thing um freshwater fish i started with just to make sure i knew you grew into to- it yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so i've kind of ev- i've the responsibility. evolved yeah exactly yeah and you really grew it, it wasn't a real pineapple right it was it was a it, fake one it yeah. yeah yeah gotten yeah. really rotty yes for sure <laughs> that should be sticking like a real pineapple. it was a real pineapple and there was a sponge that lived inside of it. exactly oh yeah <laughs> exactly. absorbed all the mold <laughs> yeah um did samara do you think that that impacted her career choice was uh, she coming over and seeing your fish tank i don't think so she's always she been kind loud. of into animals from very early on and she just loves nature and like hiking and camping and things like that. So like I think she grew into that. Yeah. And then I'm also like very – she probably influenced me as well. <gasps> oh, just like being yeah. so f- close to her and she had like this wealth mm-hmm. of knowledge. So yeah. I just have an appreciation by being friends with her as And well. being excited by something. You're like, oh, wait, I guess I should be excited about this too. Yeah. Yeah. This Absolutely. is cool. Yeah. She's working with owls right now. Okay. Which is oh, really cool. That who, is who? really cool. Yeah. Have you? I'm on Owl TikTok. I saw a <laughs> meme the other day, and it was like, out baby owls like can't hold their head up, and they like sleep basically face down. And I oh. sent it, and Samra was like, "I'm pretty sure this is fake, but it also <laughs> is real that they can't hold their heads up." So she was like trying to figure out if that was actually a real thing on. T- what are you oh, finding out on Owl TikTok? I know because the, the thing the is, legs. Now I'm, I'm yeah, the legs. <laughs> The what about legs the legs? Cra- they are so long. Have you, you really think they're tiny? Yeah, here, let's pull up a picture. It is. How are you yeah. on Alan TikTok? Okay, like, look at this. <gasps> I know. You're right. They oh, are- my God. Owl legs are crazy. They, yeah, you'd think that they're tiny, but they really, and I I mean, I'm just, okay, so this is what I was like, wait, if, um, if Samara is saying one of those facts is wrong, maybe all of them are wrong, because they all seem kind of made up. They're like, um, owls well first of all they fly absolutely silently but that also means that they can't get wet like if they if they get wet they can't fly oh which is crazy because it's like down feathers yeah and what else have i learned i've learned so many things like just they're spooky they are spooky what is she doing with owls she works in wildlife conservation so that's really cool yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um uh, what was she doing before owls because i I had her as a marine for some reason Oh no! Before I was, I think she was doing something with like a marine or like marine biology. Maybe a oh, I was like, <laughs> she was a hoorah. she was a Navy SEAL, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I think she was doing like reptiles. Well, yeah, but she, a lot oh. of she's always somewhere else. Yeah, she's and, out and about. I love having her like on Find Friends because like <laughs> she'll like, be like, "Look where, where I am right now," and I'll be like, "Where are you?" And then she'll be like, "She'll share," and I'm like, "Oh." Where That's are, really cool. Are you? <laughs> in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, oh, yeah. Wait, you didn't talk about your weekend. Oh, yeah. My weekend this weekend, I met up with one of my really close girlfriends from my first previous role. We started as nurses together. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's pregnant, <gasps> which is like really Aww. excited. <gasps> so we went to a flower class together oh, in the South ooh. Bay, which was very fun. And we learned how to make hand-tied bouquets, which was very fun. It's spring, so there's like all sorts of flowers that are in bloom. So that was really fun. And it was also like a wine pairing, which we oh. I didn't realize going in when I invited her out. And I was like, I am so sorry that there are just a, like wine a everywhere. handful of people and wine everywhere. <laughs> um, but that was really fun catching up with her. Yeah, that was that was basically my weekend. 
Do you have any good meals? Good meals. Oh, yeah. I saw my family yesterday. We went to brunch. It was really yummy. <gasps> Um, how often do you see, because your family is in is like an hour away? Yes. So how often are they coming in? They, I mean, we switch back and forth. Oftentimes I'll go to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but every so often, I want to say like maybe once every couple, maybe once a month or once not every other month, they'll come yeah. either see my sister who's like in the middle of LA or they'll come to us and we'll oh. hang out. Your sister's in the middle of LA. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. What's she up to? She is a lawyer. Whoa. Yeah. She's That's yeah. hot. Yeah. <laughs> she's very smart and very intense. Yeah. But she's good. She works many, many, many hours. Many hours. Like over 50 to 60 hours a week. So Whoa. they're working her hard. But she's good. Yeah. And then my eldest sister lives back at home with my parents. And we all work in different things. But she works in like web design. Oh, cool. Yeah. So web design, a lawyer and a nurse. <laughs> That's what's it's so weird that like, yeah, you all grow up together. And then like, yeah, me and my sister's Totally yeah. different vibes. Even like in childhood, like our interests were always very yeah. different. It's kind of like what, yeah, like what Becky was talking about on the breastfeeding of like, uh, or wait, was it you or me? Wait, where am I getting this? But like that, like you have a baby and it's like a real person. So it's mm -hmm. like, oh yeah. It's like you, the baby decides. Nature. Oh, yeah, it's I weird. think Rachel brought that up. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, yeah. Um, so you saw then you got brunch. We got brunch, which was really fun. Cute. And then we went on a walk with Bowie afterwards, which was really fun because my sister always like will text me multiple times a week and being like, can you please send photos? Like I miss him a lot. Oh. She like loves him oh. more than she loves Zach and I. She's yes. like, Bowie photos, please. Bowie photos, yeah. please. Yes. I do that with my, my sister has a dog and my parents have a dog and I'm always like, Wookie picture. <laughs> What's Wookie doing? <laughs> What's Wookie doing? And obviously my mom is like the worst <laughs> photographer. Like she just doesn't know iPhones. So yeah. she's like sends me like this blurry photo and I'm like, yay. Yay, yeah. you send more videos <laughs> next time. Yeah, videos. FaceTimes, preferably. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, the meat of this episode is book talk. Book we are talk. getting on book talk. We are having a book club. Book um, club. you read before bed on your Kindle, mm -hmm. and Becky famously is a reader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I cannot finish a book. I haven't finished a book since Brainy, you have not finished Scythe, and I you need to talk about Scythe. it. I love Scythe. <laughs> it is a really, it's so deep. I'm like, I was telling the office when I was really in it, I was like, yeah, I'm reading this book about mortality and like <laughs> death and afterlife. And they kept it being like, Rainy, it's a YA. Like, you have to preface that. <laughs> hey, it is, it is a YA, but it's like. It's deep. There's meat in it, okay? There is meat. It was really There's helping me. Meat. Yeah. Um, what are you reading now? Um, well, right now, current read is a Kaylin recommendation. Because for anyone who doesn't know, Kaylin <laughs> has like a book account on like Instagram, TikTok, yes. all of the sites where she gives like recommendations. And we have semi similar interests in <laughs> books. I wouldn't say we always overlap. What are your um, current um, overlapping interests in book? Uh, like the genre, like genres, like she really likes mysteries and she likes romanticy. Okay. Romanticy. Um, she reads like real smut. Yeah. That's what um, I was going to say. I was like, is it? I read fake <laughs> smut. Um, but right now she told me to read From Blood and Ash. It's a series. I heard a lot about this. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's very like romanticy vibes, but I'm only on the like sixth or seventh chapter. So I, I don't want to like not spoil anything, but give too much away of it. But the book that I recommended that she read was a book talk recommendation called Never Lie. Mm. And it's like a psychological thriller. It's about this young couple that just got married like six or seven months ago. And they find this like dream house um, and they go see it. The book starts. They're going to see the house and they're in a blizzard. And they get to the house and they see this like light upstairs and they're like, okay, maybe it's our rental agent, maybe whatever. Nobody is in that house. Oh, and they walk in and they see this giant portrait of a woman. And the husband is like, wait a second, I know her face. And it turns out she was this psychiatrist that uh, was murdered, presumed murdered by her boyfriend, but mm. he was like not convicted, I think. Um, or they like couldn't find the body. And this was actually her house. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. And so we're like, 
there's some creepy things happening. We're going in and out from the past and the future or the present. And then there's basically the wife stumbles upon this hidden room that has all these cassette recordings. And it turns out that the psychiatrist recorded all of her sessions. Oh, oh because my gosh. the psychiatrist also wrote books and she oh. was writing, she was writing a book and she used it to like help her remember like the, the inner details of like her patient um, <gasps> oh. sessions. Ooh. Whoa. And like the whole time I thought it was going one way. I was like, Oh, it's obviously this, like it's <gasps> too obvious that it's this. And then it wasn't that. Mm. There's something spooky no. about a therapist recording the sessions. I know. Like, even, I'm sure therapists mm-hmm. do to write books, but I just don't love that. I, I also, know. I've never thought about being recorded during a therapy session and I uh-uh. do not like the idea <laughs> of that. I think if it's only to be used for that time, yeah. like for the person to remember, because some people are more like auditory learners, some mm-hmm. are more visual learners. So I think if it helps you to hear something to like remember it better, I could yeah. see that, but... There was some, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> Shit was going down. Shit Whoa. was going down. Yeah. Have you seen that? I think we talked about this like two years ago. Couples therapy, which is like recorded couples therapy sessions. Oh, yes. And we then talked they like about edit this. it. Yes. That is, I mean, they really are they wearing their heart on their sleeves. Yeah. And it was all different sort of dynamics. It almost yeah. like helped navigate conversations between like the people yeah. I was watching it with another couple and they're like oh this is super interesting I've never thought to talk to you about yeah your opinion on this yeah um, mm-hmm. but I only watched a couple episodes I completely forgot I think it was on Showtime yeah. or something I I yeah. yeah I don't know I thought it was great yeah but also really intense there's another sh- podcast called this is dating where they record people on dates <gasps> which I think it's sort of a similar thing where I'm just like Ooh. <laughs> Whoa! And then they like talk to the person afterwards, and they're like, "Why did, did you, you give him a call it... back?" Oh my god! Tell me why. I kind of want to listen. Yeah, to that. it's good. That's so it's funny. Good. That reminds me. My parents are watching. They love this YouTube show that's like in the UK, <laughs> and it. it's a dating show, and it's just people going on first dates huh. oh. at this like kind of fake restaurant, and then the people that work there are like always the same people, and the bartenders always the same, and they just kind of like are quirky, interesting people going on first dates. And then at the end of the episode, they ask them, do you want to, you know, find out more about each other? You want to go on another date? And they say yes or no. There's something about like people like our parents age watching YouTube. I just love it. Like my grandpa loves YouTube. He's like, YouTube is more than Netflix. And I'm like, I agree. Oh my God. That's so funny. (laughs) But yeah, he's so cute. Um, Okay. Well, I am definitely interested in the, in the psychological thriller, although it sounds scary. Mm. It was a little scary. It was a little bit spooky. Mm Mm-hmm. But okay, otherwise, Turner. not too spooky. It wasn't like, um, I think another book I recommend on the podcast was The Hunting Party. Uh-huh. That one was scary. Okay. That one I was like, mm-mm. Too spooky. Mm-hmm. Nightmares. Spooky. I don't want to go to a remote place in like freaking Alaska oh. and be in a glass cabin, essentially, <gasps> a glass little dome and have My people looking in. nightmare. Oh. Even having spooky. like a window spooky, open. Spooky. Uh-uh. No way. Yeah, but yeah. speaking of um, not knowing what's coming, I talked to Becky a little bit on DMs. I started watching mm-hmm. Vampire Diaries. Whoa. Yes, Have you seen Brady. it, Becky? Yeah. No. <laughs> you must watch. I've never Welcome watched Vampire Diaries. <laughs> Literally, this is about to become just like a Vampire Diaries podcast. I think <laughs> we should watch it in tandem, talk about it every week. Yeah. It's, we're 12 years too late. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. How many it's seasons are there? How many seasons are there? I haven't checked. I feel like there's like, it's long. I feel like there were like eight seasons maybe. So good. I got to look back. But you know what? Matt watched Legacies and that that's a Vampire Diaries spinoff. Did he like it? Yeah. He <laughs> likes sometimes watching teeny bopper shows like oh, to kill yeah. time when he's not watching his Scandi yeah. dramas. He goes one of two ways, Scandi dramas or, <laughs> or a teeny bop. But yeah, Vampire Diaries, I, it, it, there are some twists and turns. I don't want to spoil but it is rainy. You don't even years know. Years. You don't even know yet. There are things that happen in seasons one and two <gasps> that come back. Oh like, my gosh! So far later, like you're like, how was this real? <laughs> and then like Ian Summerholder and Nina Dobrev were dating during the show. Oh no! What I and broke see. up during the show. Oh, that makes sense because their chemistry is kind of intense. It's <laughs> rainy. You're not even there yet. You don't even know what's going 
coming. Oh, oh I'm my so gosh. I'm so excited for you. I also am just like, I mean, unironically, they are amazing actors. I think it is good too. Yeah. I think they they got to my heartstrings a couple times. Yes. I think Stefan is maybe the weakest. Yeah. I am up. I love Bonnie. Yes, Bonnie's really cool. Just wait until oh. you meet Klaus. Oh. Klaus and Caroline forever. Oh my gosh. Caroline needs a lover. He might be a crazy murderer. Yeah. But I think they had the best chemistry of like almost any TV show couple. Oh, even though they were ever a couple. I'm so excited. I mean, I'm I'm getting through it pretty quickly, honestly. Like I am yeah, keep going. powering through. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. You gotta tell me what episode you're on so I could just start watching. Yes. There. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to look it up. Um so Maggie, what about you? What are you what are you reading? Right now I was recommended from my really close friend. She's like, you must read this before the movie comes out. So the movie stars Anne Hathaway. Oh. And it's going to be You're on Prime. You're reading fan fiction. <laughs> I'm reading The Idea of You, and it's based on Harry Styles fan fiction. <laughs> oh, my god! I love that. Yeah, I think it's yeah. like a Wattpad book, wasn't it? Watt- I think so. Wattpad, yeah, Wattpad. but she was like, you must read it, and we're yeah. going to have a watch party as soon as it comes out. The trailer for it looks so silly and fun. It looks good. And ma- it looks so good. And it's like played at South by Southwest and it got a lot of great <gasps> feedback right now. It has 10 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and it has 100%. 100%. Yes. <laughs> That's big. I'm yeah. excited. I, yeah, I think that Kaylin also is like super amped for that because that's her dream. She's a fangirl at heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so yeah. for the listeners listening, basically the book is about – this mom who brings her daughter to a concert. And I think like the movie, it's almost like Coachella, like yeah. music festival. And she basically brings her daughter to get closer to her daughter and then like meets the star of this band. And they have. And they, can you imagine, by the way, <gasps> if you were going with your mom and then your mom hooks up with the guy that you have a crush on? That's I would be absurd. devastated. I would I be like that. screaming, crying. I, I know. Like I'd be like, are you kidding me? I know. I would not want my stepdad to be like super hot and young. Yeah. And like <laughs> a pop star. Yeah. Yeah. That would creep me out. I mean, but who knows? Yeah. Maybe it works out. Let's do a how to facilitate a friend breakup audience question. Okay. Hello, Becky, Maggie, Matthew, Rainey, and other esteemed guests who may or may not be joining. I have a friend who I've known since I moved to Florida, uh, parentheses, ew, about five years ago, <laughs> who has been my only real consistent friend since I arrived. I was in a depression phase in my life after a recent breakup and a cross-country move, and misery loves company, so we grew close. Now, five years later, I am recently married, back in school for massage therapy, in therapy, and properly medicated. I am feeling happy with my life and more content than ever. The problem is that the only times I feel less happy are when I hang out with this friend. Everything is always so negative all the time, and I'm finding I'm giving more energy and emotions than I'm recouping by being with her. Recently, with my honeymoon and just getting everything together after the wedding, I've been away for about a month and I've noticed that my life is noticeably less gloom and doom. I think I'm ready to end this friendship as we are in different places in our lives and she has no interest in being happy, it seems. Any attempt to get her to look on the bright side or get her in a happier mindset is met with disdain and scoffing and I'm basically over it after this insane year. How do I go about this without looking like an asshole or at least not a huge one? Thanks for everything that you do. You truly make my Tuesday morning drives to school such a treat. All my love, Patrick. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. I know. We love when people write in. Um, Friend breakups. Well, it seems... How do we begin? I know. This is hard. It's tough because sometimes it's like you have so much love for someone, but it's also like you're just not good for me. Yeah. And I think timing is a really big factor when it when it comes to friendships and Mm -hmm. relationships. And sometimes the timing is off and I don't think it needs to be like a huge dramatic thing. But it seems like Patrick has already recognized that this is really draining him emotionally. And like, I can understand, especially after having like a very chaotic year, you can explain to your friend like, hey, Mm -hmm. I'm not, I do not have the emotional capacity if you keep getting brought in and there needs to be a a confrontation of some sort. Because I feel like we've all been there when we can't be 
there emotionally for certain friends because we have our own things that we're going through and don't yeah. want to like emotional dump on somebody else. Yeah. So. And kind of, yeah, what like what you were saying about um, there's times that is, you know, you come back and you go apart. But like if it sounds like it was like a pretty OK friendship at a time and mm -hmm. it might come back, like maybe they're going through something now or, you know, and they need to navigate it on yeah. their own and trying to figure out what they need to do to better themselves or feel better in yeah. themselves. And it has nothing to do with you. Yeah. But if you are noticing that you're an energy sponge and you're taking on mm -hmm. this negative cloud from this person and it's no longer serving you, then you need to do what's best for you and kind of separate yourself for a little bit. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you're trying to be supportive and it's not being received. Yes, exactly. Well, I feel like the conversation with the friend would be a lose-lose regardless. Like yeah. they've already told us that this person is kind of a Debbie Downer, kind of a negative Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, like they're going to walk away thinking you're a jerk. Right. Because it sounds like right. that's where their headspace is. So I think it's whatever you need to feel complete in that relationship. Um, if you feel like you need to say something to say goodbye, like mm -hmm. say it. But if you really think, eh, yeah, I, I'm good closing this chapter and just moving on, like do what feels good for your headspace. Yeah, I agree. Hola, señoras, plus Matt and Rainey. <laughs> Avid listener, but first time writer to the pod. I'm struggling to envision a permanent future with my partner, and now that Maggie is married, I figure it's a good time to ask for help. My partner, male 25, and I, female 25, have been together for seven years. Since we started dating, we quickly realized that our love was the forever kind. We've grown very close, and despite some initial jitters, we've completely fallen into our domestic lives. However, I also worry that I'm not living my 20s to the fullest dating slash sleeping around and learning about myself outside of a relationship. I really love my partner and by no means do want to break up, but I'm worried about experiencing regret later in life. To make matters more complicated, I'm not sure if these worries are based in my own fear of commitment, genuine incompatibilities, or society's pressure to be independent. That being said, my question is, how are you able to commit to the one? What made you feel a certain way that you did to spend the rest of your life with your partner? And be honest, does any part of you feel like you should be with someone else? Thank you so much for your help. With love, S. <gasps> this is a spicy S question. Spicy. spicy. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of in a similar place to S where I, Keith and I started dating when I was really young. So I never did. You know, we started dating right when I turned 21. So I never did the going out to bars and like mm -hmm. hookup culture type thing. I never did the dating apps. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like people do actually ask me a lot. They're like, do you ever like want to wish that you had like gone out and like partied more, done whatever, gone on dates? And I think no, just because mm -hmm. I'm like, I think the point of going on those dates and like hooking up with people is to try and find your person. Mm -hmm. And it just like happened that I found my person quicker than a lot of people are able to find their person. So I don't feel like I like missed out on that. I think dating apps seem fun. I like <laughs> playing on them on my friend's phones and being like, yeah, swipe for that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Swipe for her. Swipe, swipe, swipe. But no, I don't think there's like any part of me that's like, oh, I wish I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gone out and like hooked up with people like it just wasn't. It's not really something I look back on to think about. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's a big luck part, I feel like, of finding your person. Like, and I'm a hundred percent. And being in the right like time, the right place, the right mm -hmm. headspace, all of that stuff. So I think if you are lucky enough to find your person and you know that they're your person, like I don't think you should feel bad like you're missing out on something. Cause it's like, well, do you actually feel like you're missing out on something? Or is it other people yeah. trying to tell you that you've missed out on something? Yeah. Did you, I mean, did you always know when, how long into the relationship did you know that you were going to like be with Keith? I would say probably like right after I graduated when he moved to LA. Oh, wow. We just kind of had that conversation of like, okay, this is either, I'm not doing long distance yeah. for something that I don't think is going to work out eventually. So like we both need to be on the same page right. about getting married, having a family, those kind of things. And thankfully we were, which I think is another part of that luck thing. Cause I don't mm -hmm. think you find a lot of, um, like 20, how old would he have been at that time? 23 yeah. year olds 
Yeah. Who are ready to say at that time, like, right. okay, I'm ready. And yeah. moving to a new place, especially. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that sometimes is not always a given. Yeah. Yeah. What was that conversation like? Like, were you nervous for it or were you just like, I just needed the information? Like, it'll be what it'll be. Um, I feel like it was always, it'll be what it'll be, but it was pretty obvious, like, cause Keith is three years older than I am. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty obvious that like Chicago didn't have what he needed to be successful. Yeah. And it was like frustrating to see him try there uh -huh. with just no luck. Right. Not no luck. I mean, he had luck. He did things, but like it, it just wasn't like his full potential, I think, which is like obviously, you know, when we moved here and then he got the job at BuzzFeed, it's like, oh, there it yeah. is. You know, it clicks. That's how he was able to like kind of unlock that creative side. Um, what was he doing in Chicago? Like, was he he was in like performing, trying to get like, what was, what was he running up against? Yeah. He did actually, uh, a touring improv group for many years called mission improbable. Mm. And so he would do tour shows. Like when I was in <laughs> Henry's like squeaking <laughs> like, when I dad. was a senior or right before my senior year. Cause that's when we started dating or maybe mm -hmm. we started dating right before my junior year. I don't know. Yeah. Sometime around that. I think it was right before my senior year. Yeah. I feel very old now. I'm like, huh? Like, well, how old are you? Um, he was touring with Mission Improbable. So going to colleges, going to like mm. people who had like big work functions. Gesundheit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and performing and doing um, improv for them. So the oh, crowd okay. could be like six people or it could be like 2,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're discovering our voice over here. Oh, my gosh. Huge. <laughs> he's finding his voice. Um, so he's doing that. And that, you know, is stressful. And tour, the tour life mm -hmm. is, like, really difficult. So finding – he never had, like – he didn't do, like, side jobs other than, like, nannying. Oh, he was a nanny? He was That's a adorable. nanny. Yeah, a very sweet little boy. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he nannied him. They had fun together. Zach. Um, <laughs> Zach, big Zach, lots big, of Zach, big Zach in his energy. Life. Yeah, yeah. Did you always ever need a Zach in his life? Always having Zach. <laughs> did you ever nanny? I didn't nanny. I babysat. Um, yeah. So I did more like hourly work. He did more like he would be there like all day with this kid. Um, but yeah, I babysat mostly in college. Yeah, for Babysitting extra is money. A sweet gig. Yeah. If if they go to sleep at seven, yeah, and you're there mm -hmm. until two. That I mean, that is. Nice. I mean, the reason we're actually <laughs> recording at home right now is because yes. we're in the process of finding someone <laughs> yes. to watch Henry while we record this <laughs> podcast. Especially in, I feel like, L.A. where it's like, I, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like maybe in a smaller community it would be easier, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think it's tough, too, because it's just for one day for like yeah. a couple hours. I mean, we are going to extend it to be the whole day just because I don't think yeah. it's... I don't think it's lucrative for the other person to come over and only watch him for like four hours. Yeah, because yeah, then you have to have a... Different gigs lined up because then yeah, like how are you going to piece yeah, those it's all like together? Not, it's a reliable little bit of time for them, but not like yeah. enough. And like a lot of people want a full time like nanny job. Yeah, right. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't have that for you. Yeah, it's yeah. just the so we're going yeah. to a lot of friends' nannies and being like, do you need extra hours? Oh, right, and also <laughs> the internet. The internet, Maggie. Did you used to babysit? I used to babysit a lot in <gasps> nursing school. We oh were just gosh. like parents' dreams because yeah, we had yeah. like CPR, especially I was like interested in pediatrics. So I would go and it was usually I would like study and then the kids would go to bed and I would like help with like bath time and stuff mm. the first couple of times. And then I would just like study until the parents. And it was usually it seemed like date nights. Like I was very yeah. much like not like a full time nanny, but I was like there as an added bonus. So like parents could have like their parent time. Yeah. Did you have themselves. any like nightmare kids where you're just like, Ugh. I had one little girl. <laughs> she was <laughs> very spunky and like adventurous, but every single time, like sometimes we would go to the park, um, in the middle of the day. Sometimes I would come in the middle of the day as well, just cause like by my junior and senior year, I had more of a flexible schedule and it was mostly like clinical and things like that. Yeah. But we would go into the park, which was walking distance from their house sometimes. And her parent didn't warn me 
oh. the first time, so I didn't know. But this little girl would like rip off all her clothes <gasps> oh. and like play in the fountain. And I didn't bring like towels. I didn't bring like an extra oh. set of clothes or like water repellent shoes. So I that was a nightmare. And I didn't I was like, oh, my God, what do I do? She's like soaking wet and she's like naked. How do we get her? <laughs> do I like have her put her other clothes on? It was just like a mess. But oh, my gosh, what'd that you was do? always funny. Um, I honestly don't. <laughs> remember I think we just like walked home and she yeah. like half put on like a shirt but then like it was, she was like she was, was not a, a clothes person she was not a clothes person she's yeah. like when I play in the water I am. you're like this is I mean I you're get a kid it. yeah you're a kid and also like clothes are kind of uncomfortable yeah so and it like, slows you down and it weighs you down. down especially if they're wet yeah when wet um yeah so you oh yeah so you nannied in nursing school did you have another was that like your main source of income or did you have like another um I also what else did I do? I definitely worked it. Well, my last two years, I actually had two uh, nurses aid jobs. So I worked at two different hospitals because I was, for some reason, terrified of not having a job upon graduation. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I worked for basically, I think, three years at one and then two overlapped the other. So I would like pick up a lot of night shifts on the weekends mm -hmm. and I would just be like a nurse's aide kind of thing. Ooh, I mean, okay. I have a question for you and a question for you. They're kind of related. They're actually not related, but um, for what do you think you've learned from like nursing as a whole? Like you've been a nurse for years and years, like, and, and just thinking about like, okay, you were a CNA for a long time, like nursing school. Is there at the root, like, is there something that you come back to or like, what do you, I don't know. It's sort of a vague question, but like, yeah, what have you learned? I guess my main takeaway that I wouldn't like trade in for the world is like being an advocate for yourself and kind of being yeah. involved in your own care. I'm not saying that you should mm -hmm. tell your doctor and tell them that they're wrong and things like that, but just yeah. being like an active participant in your care is really important. And especially working in like the pediatric population, we want to instill that like, yeah, ask questions. This is how you take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, this is what you should know if you have this diagnosis going forward. This is like the things you should look out for. And I think yeah. like education has been like the main thing that I've taken away yeah. and been able to apply it in like different family scenarios yeah. if someone were to get sick. It is such a, I mean, I know because my, my good friends from high school who are twins are both nurses and their both. mom, wow. I know they're <laughs> nurses, the identical, um, same hospital, same specialty. Uh, I think that they're just, they switch floors. So what does oh, that mean? Are so they, they may be like a float yeah. kind of position. Yeah. Um, but they, their mom, um, they went through this medical thing. I think she's doing okay now, but sh they were like, it was just watching them be like, okay. Like they, they did this thing. What was it called? It was like, she, they were like, you need to either get these results or like, we're calling patient advocacy on you. And then immediately. Like mm. it's stuff like just the inside of like, I didn't even know there was patient advocacy. Like yeah. I didn't know you could be like, but um, yeah, having the inside scoop of like how it operates. Yeah. And just really like, big. I didn't know for like many years, even like starting out that there's like a whole department of like patient experience yeah. and like they want people to have like a good experience when they come into the hospital and like you hope that you don't have to use that. Yeah. But yeah. So intense. Also nursing is just, I mean, like the stories um, from my my friends who are nurses are just like so intense. I know. And it really makes you just have such like it helps you kind of see that not every day is promised and yeah. like really just remember to take care of yourself even though as hard as it is sometimes because you yeah. get wrapped up in like the day to day and things that you need to do. Yeah. So it helps with mindfulness. I mean, it definitely takes a toll on your mental yeah. health sometimes, but I wouldn't trade in the knowledge that I've gained from working in the field that I do. Yeah. Yeah. The emotional labor is like really intense. Yeah. My friend, my, my friend Maria was like, she went through this phase where she got tested for everything. Like oh. she was like, I'm going to get sick. Like I, cause she just deals with people who are like in Constantly. really bad, like, yeah. So she was just like, let me have a colonoscopy. And they're like, you're 25. Like it's okay. Yeah. She's like, no, give it to me. <laughs> I mean, it is on the rise in early thirties and forties now. Everyone yeah. eat your fiber. <gasps> oh, yeah. eat your fiber. I have, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, but, yeah. but like I have a family history of colon cancer in my family and both my sisters have precancerous cells. So like I very oh. much advocate for high fiber. Yeah. Pay attention to your bowel habits, even though like a lot of people get icked out by that. Oh. Definitely. If there's like a huge change, yeah. listen to yeah. your self and your intuition.
Yes. Be an advocate. Be an, an advocate. active participant in your health. Yeah. Because nobody else can take notes the way you can and like True. notice things the way that you can. So. Yes. Um, and then Becky, I feel like whenever I am like, you know, talking to you over Zoom and like you're with Henry, you seem so happy with him. Like you seem like there's so much joy. Is there. I do. Yeah. Like talk about because I know obviously motherhood is like really intense and hard. But what are like the good parts? Yeah. I mean, I think almost all of it is like good if mm -hmm. it's it's so different for everybody. Right. So from like my perspective and my experience, which is like very privileged to be able to stay home with him. Mm -hmm. Um, I just really, I like hanging out with him. Like, especially now that he has like a little personality, he's just like so fun. Uh -huh. And I will say it's gotten like 10, I think it is so much harder personally, again, mm -hmm. not for everyone. Yeah. I think it is so much harder when they start eating real food. I feel like all I do all day is cook, mm -hmm. clean, clean the baby, cook, clean, clean the baby, cook, clean, clean the baby. And like in between that, you know, he's we do a mix of sort of purees and baby led weaning. So he's, you know, gagging on things and you have to watch that. And you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's really um, And Henny's like starting physical therapy soon. So it's just like there are a lot of extra moving parts. Yeah. <gasps> What's he going to work on in physical therapy? Yeah. His muscles. Um, well, it's it's common with like preemies to have to do some PT um, mm -hmm. So we're just seeing if it's his like preeminess or does he have issues with maybe low muscle tone mm -hmm. um, just because preemies tend to hit developmental milestones like a little later. Mm -hmm. um, so we just want to make sure that he's hitting all of those at the appropriate time and mm -hmm. makes it easier for him to like do stuff when he yeah. has stuff to do. Yeah. I'm scared of choking. So I feel like if there was a baby, I would be freaking out all yeah. the time. Not to feed fuel, but <laughs> no, 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 it is tough. I think something that helped, not helped, I think it's, it was, you know, still incredibly difficult to watch was when mm -hmm. he was little. Yeah. Um, when he would choke, like I know what his face looks like mm. when he's not getting oxygen. Like yeah. I <gasps> can see that in him. So when oh. he is like gagging on food or something, it almost like doesn't phase me in the same way. It still stresses me out. Yeah. But I'm also like a very big rule follower and there are a lot of like guidance on how and like what to feed your babies. So I feel like once I just have like the rules, I'm good at following it and being like, OK, well, it is unlikely that you're going to choke on this yeah. giant piece of strawberry because your windpipe's so little. Yeah. Yeah. But it question. is still stressful. I yeah. know you're a big reader. Did you read all any sort of prep for, yeah. I don't know, feeding your baby, giving birth. Like, did that help ease any sort of, um, not anxieties, but like concerns mm -hmm. or worries? Were you able, did that help at all? Did you do that? Do you recommend that? I do. I mean, if you're someone like me who likes rules and likes data, um, I really like Emily Oster's book. She's very popular in the parent world. Mm. Um, but she just kind of, she was an economist and then she like switched into more like parent focused data. And so basically she just reads data and explains to you like, here are the actual things that could come up. Oh, that's helpful. During birth, during pregnancy, here are the studies that we base this on mm. and now go make your own decision. Mm. Um, so I read her book while I was pregnant, but then I didn't read the the second part for like after the baby's come. <laughs> right. There was some things that got yeah, in the way. But I liked yeah. having that information, though I do think there should be more of like something should be written about like. I feel like most of my mom friends and certainly not all of them had some sort of experience, kind of what you're talking about mm -hmm. with patient advocacy, where it's like if you've never given birth before and you're not in the medical field, you don't really know what's normal and what's not normal. Mm -hmm. And like I feel like there should be some sort of like guidebook on what to do. Yeah. And yeah. How to know what's normal, even though there's going to be so many different things. But just so you get a baseline of like this yeah. is what it should be kind of be like yeah you see Alfred um <laughs> but yeah I think I I love being a mom and I love hanging out with Henry during the day mm -hmm. and again very privileged place yeah. to be <laughs> like I just saw Hillary Swank on like Instagram or something 
Um, and I do think <laughs> E! News did her dirty with the headline because it's not really what she said. Uh-huh. But the headline was like, Hillary Swank thinks moms need to stop complaining about motherhood. Whoa. <laughs> and it's like, I don't think when I hear someone complaining, I don't think they're complaining about motherhood. I think they're no. complaining about like societal pressure and um, like yeah. confusion on the information that we're getting and mm. like gender roles. Like, I don't think it's like mm-hmm. the majority is saying like, I wish I didn't do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And for so long, like, no, there's no language around it at all. Like, everybody was just None. like, you know, pretty much just doing it by themselves. Yeah. And now we're just starting yeah. to, to exchange information about it, I think. Yeah. And I think the discourse, too, that I've seen a lot online versus, like, stay-at-home moms or stay-at-home parents versus parents who work, mm-hmm. I feel like society wants that to be a big deal. But I think the people that are actually living it. Yeah. Don't care. Yes, like I've I never totally agree. thought differently of any of my friends that stayed home or didn't. Mm-hmm. Me either. I don't it's have never any like, opinion about that. Yeah. I was like, I just like don't have an opinion. I have an opinion about what I do, but I just like never thought of it for my friends. I was like, that's just what they're doing. So that's what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a great point. And what have you like, what have you learned about yourself? Um, I think I've learned to be more patient Mm. just because at the beginning, I really wanted to kind of control every aspect of like what Henny was doing and when and a timeline and a schedule and things like that. And now I think I'm a little more like Mm -hmm. you do you like, yeah, you're playing on the floor. Like I don't need to be holding the ball in front of you going ball, 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 play with the ball, throw the ball, do X, Y, Z. Like I see him like, pick up the ball and look at it. And like, (laughs) he is like, aha, ball. Like you can kind of see him figuring it out and figuring out it's, it's fun to watch them figure stuff out and like learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And their little personalities come out more. (gasps) Um, Yeah. The face of the make when they like are figuring something out, you're like, oh, and and it's kind of like, you're trying to figure out what they're figuring out. Cause you're like, you're just looking at a ball, but maybe you're thinking about how it's round. Or like, yeah, it's like, do you know what round is? Yeah, (laughs) You know, is that a concept that you like? No, I know you can see it. But like, what? Yeah. Do you think of it? And like now that he's babbling, it's like, yeah, he says mama and dada, but he has no idea what those words mean. They're just like sounds he's making. So I feel like and you can kind of hear him now. He goes. Oh my God. He just likes the way noise. that sound is. <laughs> so like hearing him like express himself and he'll just like randomly be like, ah, and then just kind of look around. <laughs> You're like, yeah, that was you. You can use your voice. You can be loud and you can be quiet and you can be, you can laugh. You can be funny. You can do all these things. And yeah. Yeah. He's cool. He's a chill baby. He's, he's, just, cool. he's cool. He's a cool guy. He's cool. He's a cool, cool guy. Baby. Cool. He's a cool guy. Yeah. Cool guy. Um, thank you so much for tuning in for this week, for this week's episode. We really appreciate it. Um, be sure to write in if you guys need any advice. You can sit with us pod at gmail.com. We love reading your questions and quandaries. So be sure to message us. We love hearing from you. Um, and give us your updates. If we've yes. answered one of your questions, we're trying to compile all of our updates to give you like one episode that is just chock full of oh, tea. updated information on how whatever the situation you were in, how it went after you either took our advice or didn't take our advice. Mm. Or sometimes it like would work out where we read advice and someone had already had to have the confrontation with said friend or whatever it was or breakup, whatever. I've gotten an update for one of them. And he was like, I wish I would gotten your advice before. Oh, But that's okay. But then that's also like, okay, well, I still want to know what happened. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So be sure to keep washing your hands, being nice to yourself, be nice to others, tipping your servers, peeing after sex. <laughs> I haven't said that one in a while. And we will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.